What up, it's Shankster94, and welcome to the epilogue for my full play of Resident Evil Survivor 2 Code Veronica. So, as always, the purpose of this epilogue is to show you guys anything that's necessary to show to contribute to my full play of this game that I didn't show in the original playthroughs, and to share my final thoughts and basically, once and for all, conclude this game. So, basically, the few things that I have to show are, first of all, gameplay of Rodrigo in dungeon mode, as well as his result screen, just to show that real quick. So I would do like one of the time-based missions, get through it fast and whatnot. But yeah, that's one thing. That's like the only thing in dungeon mode that I have to show, I think. And uh, then, I have a lot more to show you guys in arcade mode, uh, specifically what happens when the timer runs out in the final mission, uh, when you're battling Nemesis anyway, uh, the rest of the secret reports by finding all the secret messages within arcade mode, and finally uh, getting to the end without the jewels to see like the different ending that's supposedly there. So those are all the things I want to show you guys, so I will go ahead and get into dungeon mode real quick. We'll start with the simpler stuff, which is that. And I'll show you some Rodrigo gameplay, starting now. Alrighty, so I'm gonna stick with the clock tower because it's probably the simplest like location, and then I'm gonna do the time-based missions to get through it very fast. All right, let's go over, and we have Rodrigo Juan Raval. All right, and of course his only weapon is the knife. So let's try him out, shall we? Just go. Just go. Okay, so he's definitely a more difficult character to use. He has a lot of health, though. Okay, unfortunately, there's no such thing as a critical with him, it seems. Because I'm not hearing the ding, you know? And you still hit against the wall like a normal knife should. Ah! So yeah, this is a character for advanced players only, obviously. Yeah, I keep trying to do criticals when they don't exist, so... Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and skim through to the end of the level to show you guys the results screen, since we got enough gameplay of him, obviously. Whoa! Barely in time. Alright, so there's the end result. <laughs> Is that really worth it? For a picture that you could probably find online? Alright. So that is Rodrigo gameplay for you guys. Now I'm gonna go into arcade mode. And the first of all the things I want to show you... Yeah, what happens when the timer runs out with Nemesis. Because that's a failed mission, so... <laughs> nope. Yeah, I'm gonna get that out of the way right now. Alright. That one bear is gonna get his wish. Okay, so I figured as much. That's what happens. Everything just explodes. The timer runs out. What do you think was gonna happen? God damn it! All right, I'm at. I got the tyrant to its last strand of life. So let's see if it's true that the ending is different if I don't collect all the jewels because I did skip that very last one.
Okay. So it's true, if you do not collect all the jewels, you don't battle Nemesis at the end. But of course, that's not a... <laughs> that would be the tr that wouldn't be the true ending, now would it? I guess the true ending is defeating Nemesis as well. But then again, this game is not canonical, so I'm not worried about that. Alright, so now I'm gonna go through one more time. Now I'm gonna show you guys all of the secret messages throughout the play. Alright, so here is where the first stage's secret message is. And the secret message is, it says five. Alright, so there's message, there's secret message number one. And that should unlock the first secret report, which I never unlocked. I'm also going to show you guys what happens on every stage when Nemesis gets loose. Because these are whole cutscenes, so they're worth showing. Okay. Alright, so here's the location of the second uh, message. It says Jewel. It's in this lone room in the second stage. Alright. And of course, second stage breakout. Third stage's secret message location in here says 25 minutes. Okay. Well, we've all seen the third stage breakout scene, but I'm just going to show it anyway since it's part of it. Alright, of course, the fourth stage is secret message in this lone room here and it says nemesis all right speaking of which he's about to show up here all right so there is no special cutscene for the fourth stage because first of all he does show up at the very beginning of the fourth stage but then after you defeat the giant spider he lays off for like a minute and a half and that's the time that just ran out but they still don't associate a cutscene with it, unfortunately. Alright, so here's the final stage's secret message location. It's actually this carousel right here. It says KILL. So... What was it? Like... 20... Nemesis... 25 minutes, Nemesis KILL. Jewel... remember what the first message was. It was like something jewel 25 minute nemesis kill. What was the first word? But I'm betting it's referencing the fact that you have to collect all of the jewels in order to battle nemesis. Alright, so if all is correct, I should have all five secret reports now, because I got all five secret messages, as well as all five jewels. So, let's check it out. Yep, sure enough. Okay. So, we've seen reports two, three, and four already. So, I'm just going to show you guys one and five. If you want to see the other three, then you got to go back to my arcade mode playthrough, the last one anyway. So, first report, Diary of the Chief Warden. Okay, and of course, these things take forever, so I'm gonna speed it up for you guys. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, that one was quite disturbing. <laughs> it's basically the origin of that gigantic spider, I guess, that you face off in Code Veronica after seeing Alexia or something. But yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> Alright, now let's read the final report. Monologue of Claire. Ooh. Oh, I bet this is where it reveals that this whole game is basically Claire's dream after escaping. Something like that. I guess we'll find out in a second. God, I wish there was a way to speed this up for me, but for you guys it's easy. Okay, so you had some Inception stuff going on there. She, like, had a dream within a dream, but... It's just a dream that she had. There's nothing to indicate that it's directly after the events of the actual Code Veronica canon. Because she doesn't mention Chris or anything. So this whole entire game is non-canonical. Just a figment of Claire's imagination. Alright, well, that's the end of the secret reports. Alright, so, I think that's everything. I showed you Rodrigo gameplay in dungeon mode. I showed you all the secret messages, hence all the secret reports. I even showed what happens when the timer runs out, even though that was really unnecessary. And the um, regular ending when you don't collect all of the jewels. So, there you go. I think that's everything, people. Really hope so. I would really hate if someone found something else that I should show, like, after the fact, because I really hate going back to these things. But anyway, that is the end of Resident Evil Survivor 2 Code Veronica. I really hope you enjoyed watching me play this game. This game in general, I mean, once again, it's one gigantic minigame. There's no canonical story behind it, really. Just taking elements from Code Veronica and placing it in. But yeah, as a mini game, it's all right in my opinion. It it has some action elements. I really loved the exploding zombies, like in the Inferno mission. That was like one of my favorite parts of the entire game. Arcade mode is okay, and then of course versus Roach mode is just a really just a mode to bur blow off some steam because you're just committing mass genocide of roaches basically. This game overall in the entire franchise is definitely in my bottom five favorites. Can't exactly name a place for it right now, but it's definitely low on the list. It's definitely not one of my favorites, because there's no story attached. Alrighty, I think that's going to conclude it, people. So, this is Shankster94, a.k.a. The Gamer Shankster. Rate, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to follow me at Twitter, at Shankster underscore 94. And check out my Facebook facebook page and of course to show support if you wish check out my patreon page and um it's gonna just be shown at the end of the video but the next game in the franchise that i'm gonna play because i go in order of release date although someone pointed out that 
Survivor 2 actually came before Gaiden. So I did make a slight error on that part, but that's the only time I will make an error because it's the only um, release date that was incorrect when I was looking at it. Anyway, though, the very next game will be a long-anticipated one by a lot of my dedicated subscribers. It will be, in fact, Resident Evil Remake. For the young generations, they'll probably know it better as Resident Evil Remastered, because I will be playing the remastered version since it's the latest release of the remake. So, of course, that will be the next game, and the full play of that is going to be extremely complex, because it will be the most complex full play I've done since the original Resident Evil. Why? Because there are the eight endings again, like in the original. However, there are two extra endings for each character, so I will be playing that game at least 12 times. And hopefully, like, all the mini the mini games that take place in the main game throw out and a whole bunch of other stuff. I will go into more detail, of course, in the prologue of that full play, which unfortunately will probably be a long ways off. I'm talking possibly up to a month. Even longer. I don't know, people. It's just I need to research the hell out of Remake before I'm ready to tackle it head on and do a full play of it. Of course, anything that I miss in my initial playthroughs could always be covered in a bonus video. It's just I would rather get a lot of it out of the way in the initial playthrough so the bonus video doesn't have to be excruciatingly long, you know what I mean? But anyway, I got a few subscribers who are going to help me out with that, and they've been sending me information since I since before I even started Survivor 2. So I'm going to have to look back on that and communicate with them a little more and do my own research, of course, before I have a solid layout of how I'm going to play Remake. But once again, go into more detail in the prologue of that game. So I will see you guys there. Peace out! That was cheesy.